Hey folks, welcome to All Things Waffled, the show that asks, not will it waffle, but should it waffle. I'm your host, Darren Stottrup, and today we're going to be waffling leftovers. Okay, well, welcome to another episode of the show. I'm here with a good friend of mine, Carl Lipscomb. Carl, how long have we known each other? You know, Darren, I think we've known each other for probably about six to eight years. I can't quite put a date on it, but uh, I attribute our meeting to Kyle. Kyle, if you're watching. Yeah, Kyle, a little shout out to you. Kyle brought us together. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> so um, today we're gonna be waffling leftovers, right? So what'd you bring? Well, you know, last night I had a big old sushi dinner um, and it was one of those buy one, get one half off rolls and the other half off roll, I couldn't quite finish it. So here is my rainbow roll that I could nice. not finish. So I brought that for us today to see, you know, what can we do with a leftover sushi roll? Sweet. Well, it looks like we got a bunch of different kinds of fish on there. So we'll, uh, we'll have a little bit of seared something or other. Yeah. Nice. Well, I brought some, uh, some pizza. There's a Mediterranean restaurant that I went to last night. And uh, of all things, they have some of the best pizza in town. So I got this uh, chicken and garlic with artichoke hearts pizza. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, and uh, I've been going to Thai food for a long time and the first thing that I got was uh, pad thai and I stopped eating it for a long time because it's sort of like a beginner dish. Uh, but I've kind of been on a kick again. So I got some, some pad thai, some chicken pad thai from a place here in town. So um, we're gonna try these first and just see how they are. And then uh, just on their own, we're, we're not gonna heat it up in the oven though. Um, as you've heard in the last few episodes, it's been like 100 degrees out here on the Central Coast. So Hot. we're not gonna turn this on. No, thank you. Um, nor are we in a, it's an open flame stove, so we're not gonna put it on the skillet. So we're gonna just use the microwave, uh, heat it up like, like you would for any sort of leftovers, see how that is. And then we're gonna compare that to throwing it in the waffle iron. Sounds like a plan. All right, let's do this. So we have the waffle iron preheated as usual. I've sprayed down the actual pizza with the oil. I find that spraying the food item rather than the waffle iron tends to get better results. And when cooking pizza on a waffle iron, what's really crucial is to make sure you keep that waffle iron on the highest heat setting. What that does is it cooks the cheese and makes it crunchy. If the heat source is too low, you're gonna end up with a ooey gooey mess and it's gonna be a pain to clean. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and put this bad boy in here. And let's go. Ooh, that sizzles nice. All right, so I think it's done. What do you think here, Carl? Oh man, that couldn't look any better. We've got the waffle iron on the highest heat setting, and what that did is it created a nice, hard, cheesy crust on the top. And as you can see, there's no cheesy residue left up on the lid, so this is gonna be a cinch to clean. Couldn't, couldn't have been any better. What, how long do we have this in here for? That was on there for about five minutes, I'd say. Yeah, something around there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this onto the plate, and we're going to try the pizza out. Do you have any ranch dressing? No. Sure. All right, so we have just finished trying out this uh, waffled cheese pizza. Um, it was pretty good. There's, there's obviously the nice taste that you get from the cheese being uh, griddled as it is like this. Um, it's got a nice consistency too, kind of crunchy. What do you think about it? Yeah, I definitely hear you on the crunch factor. Um, on a scale from one to 10, I'd say this is a 10 on the crunchiness scale. Yeah. Um, but we cooked it for five minutes. If you want to scale it down to four minutes, it probably would be a little less crunchy, more desirable. But for me, Darren, it's got a great, great flavor. I would eat this. Nice. Again. Personally, I would like it to be a little less crunchy. I, if it's on the scale of 10, I'd probably want it to be down to about a seven or maybe an eight. Um, to do that, like what you're saying, you could try and change the time from five minutes down to four or something. It might be harder to get out of the waffle iron, but it might be worth doing. The other option that I was thinking is you could even sort of uh, make a panini out of it, you know, so you have two different pieces of pizza, put them together and then put that in there. Might work too. But if you like crunchy, this is a great way to cook it. Just make sure you have a beer handy or a nice dipping sauce mm -hmm. like some ranch, ranch dressing. Some ranch dressing. Well, there you have it. Now we're gonna move on to the sushi. All right, so we have the waffle iron preheated. It's about a quarter of the power. We're gonna be putting the sushi in, so we don't want to scorch the fish uh, or the, the rice that we're gonna put in there. Yeah, so we're gonna do sushi two separate ways in the, in the waffle iron here. We're gonna put them in a fancy side up, meaning that you can see the whole sushi roll and all the different layers in there. And then the lastly, we're gonna put them standing upright just so we get a, a variability to see how it turns out the best way because this is our first time doing it along with you guys. So you'll see how we do. 
So, wish us luck. <laughs> not quite sure how long we're gonna keep these in for. Probably not too long, but we'll come back and take a look. All right, so we're gonna open it up and we're gonna take a look at it. What are your thoughts, Darren? How does that look to you? This one looks fantastic. Uh, it's got some nice crispiness there. This is, it also looks good. Uh, I'm curious how we're gonna get this out, but I, I think this might work. All in all, it looks good. So we'll be back with you to let you know how it tastes. All right, so the sushi is out. We had increased the power of the waffle iron to about 50%, and we did a total cook time of about nine minutes. What we wanted to do with that is cook it low and slow for two reasons, to not overcook the fish right away, right. but also to give the rice a chance to really come together and be cohesive and form a nice toasty colored crust, which is what happened. Yeah, so it looks good. Give it a try. Cheers. Cheers. It's like a deep fried roll. Yeah, that bite was delicious. I think that waffled sushi is a hit. The way that the rice crisped together and all the flavors intermingled through all of the different aspects of it, really good. Yeah, the sushi, it was a little bit on the dry side, speaking of the fish, but like I said earlier, I wasn't too personally excited about eating raw fish the second day. Right. So I would rather err on the side of maybe a little bit overcooked, but again, it was very delicious and I would definitely take sushi home. Yeah, in fact, I'm gonna have a little bit more here. It was mm. good as a winner. Yeah. Next, we're going to be waffling the pad thai. So we're going to preheat the waffle iron and we'll be back in a minute. All right, so we have the waffle iron preheated here. It's at full heat and we've got the pad thai. We're gonna go ahead and put this in here and we're thinking that it's gonna be about, what, three to five minutes? Yeah, it sounds about right to me. Cool, well, we'll check back in just a few minutes then. All right, so it's been about six minutes, high heat. Let's see what we got. That looks pretty good to me. It's got some nice crisp. It uh, looks like the noodles kind of adhered together a bit. It's got some great coloring. I like all the grill marks you can see on there. It looks very appetizing. Can't wait to dig in. All right, let's have at it. What were your thoughts on this one? This was an interesting waffle. When you had the pad thai in there, and after it was done coming out of the waffle iron, it seemed it had the same texture as a hash brown. Yeah. So that made me think of this would be a great item to have the morning after your pad thai dinner. You fry up a couple eggs while it's grilling up on the waffle iron, and when everything's done, you have yourself a nice, fancy, savory breakfast. I think that could be awesome. In fact, what you could even do is take those eggs, crack those open, put them in the waffle iron, have it all together all at once. Now that's fancy. Well, of all the items that we cooked today, we had the pizza, the sushi, and the pad thai. What was your favorite? I'd have to say this last one, the pad thai, because it made me think of so many different options you can do with it, so that was my favorite. Yeah, I think of taste-wise, I think the sushi was probably my favorite, but it was also probably the least practical of all the different ideas, in which case I would agree uh, the pad thai is the way that I would go. Carl, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a good time. Yeah, You're sure always did. welcome back. Thanks. So, cool. Uh, for you folks here, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button. Give us a comment about what kind of pre-made food items you'd like to see us make on the next episode. But most importantly, make sure that you subscribe for more waffling goodness. We'll see you next time. Pizza is everything. It's a delicious. Bellissimo. Pizza pie. Here it is, the pizza pie. We got it. It's so good. Straight with my hands. Ooh, tough guy. Um, this sushi is close to 24 hours old and it's been kept at variable temperatures.